Hello, and welcome back to the Gospel Teachings of Richard Arlen Kern. I'm Jacob, and today we're going to be talking about the Kingdom of God. The conclusion is, the kingdom that God said he would set up at Daniel 2.44 is the kingdom of God preached by Jesus. That kingdom is a spiritual kingdom, as if to say, it consists of all the minds of every person who has faith in Jesus Christ as their Savior and accepts his gospel of the kingdom with the simplicity and innocence of a child. Discussion 1. Every king reigns over a kingdom. In this world, that kingdom consists of a landmass and the people occupying that landmass. 2. God says at Daniel 2.44 that he is going to set up a kingdom. Here is Jan- uh, Daniel chapter 2, verse 44. But in the days of those kingdoms, the God of heaven will set up a kingdom that shall never be destroyed, and his kingdom shall not be delivered up to another people, and it shall break in pieces, and shall consume all these kingdoms, and itself shall stand forever. 3. What is that kingdom? Here is how God describes his kingdom. Mark chapter 1 verse 14 and 15. And after John the Baptist had delivered up, Jesus came into Galilee, preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God, and saying, The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. Luke chapter 7 verse 28. I say to you, among those born of women, there is not a greater prophet than John the Baptist, yet the least in the kingdom of God is greater than he. Luke chapter 16 verse 16 and 17. Until John came, or John the Baptist, there were the law and the prophets. Since then the kingdom of God is being preached, and everyone is forcing his way into it. Yet it is easier for heaven and earth to pass away than for one tittle of the law to fail. Easier for heaven and earth to pass than one tittle, one tittle, one tiny piece of the law to fail. Matthew chapter 6, verse 9 and 10. In this manner, therefore shall you pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Luke 17, verse 20 and 21. And on being asked by the Pharisees, when is the kingdom of God coming? He answered and said to them, The kingdom of God comes unaware. Neither will they say, Behold, here it is, or behold, there it is. For behold, the kingdom of God is within you. Luke 22, verse 29 and 30. And I appoint to you a kingdom, even as my Father has appointed to me, that you may eat and drink at my table in my kingdom. And you shall sit upon thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. Psalms chapter 2, verse 6 and 7. But I am appointed king by him, over Sion, his holy mountain, preaching his commandment. The Lord has said to me, You are my son, this day have I begotten you. Mark chapter 10, verse 13 through 16. And they were bringing little children to him, that he might touch them. But the disciples rebuked those who brought them. But when when Jesus saw them, he was indignant and said to them, Let the little children come to me, and do not hinder them, for of such is the kingdom of God. Amen, I say to you, whoever does not accept the kingdom of God as a little child will not enter it. And he put his arms about them, and laying his hands upon them, he began to bless them. And I think this is important too, that you have to be like a child, which means you are very much uh, reliant on your parents. And uh, in this situation, he's speaking of reliant on his father, reliant on him. Um, As a child, you have to have full faith and um, realize that he is the only one that can help you. What is the gospel of the kingdom of God? God says he is a king. A king, by definition, is a male monarch who rules over a kingdom or people and is invested with absolute power. God says that his kingdom, the domain over which he has authority, is not of this world, as if to say, does not consist of a physical territory. Rather, he says his kingdom is within us. It is a spiritual kingdom in which the spirits or minds and thus actions of all his servants are governed by his commandments. Together, we, his servants, are to be built into a spiritual house offering spiritual or mental sacrifices to God. Also found, um, or this is found in 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 5. God prophesied in the Old Testament, Daniel 2, 44, that the day would come when he would set up his kingdom. 
Jesus fulfilled this prophecy when he came into Galilee preaching the gospel or good news of the kingdom of God and saying, The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. It's Mark 1, verse 14. They stripped away essential, uh, the stripped away essential message of the gospel of the kingdom of God is this. One, sin is disobeying God's laws. All lawlessness is sin. 1 John chapter 5, 17. One must read the Bible to learn what God's laws or commandments are. That's important. We can't know what they are unless we uh, read our Bible and find out what God has appointed laws for us. Number two, God is holy and hates sin and sinners. For the highest hates sinners. That's in Ecclesiasticus 12.3 and Psalms 5.7. Three, the wages or penalty of sin is eternal or everlasting death. As God says, for the stages of sin is death, but the gift of God is life everlasting in Christ Jesus our Lord. Romans 6.23. Number four, God is going to live for a very long, long time, for eternity in fact, and he has decided that he would like to live that eternity with loving, sinless children. He says, shall not I that make others to bring forth children, myself not bring forth, says the Lord? Shall I that I give generations to others be barren, says the Lord your God? And that's in Isaiah 66, 9. Five, so how has God chosen to bring forth children and what will they look like? Incredibly, they will look like you and me. God has created every human being with the potential of being adopted into his family as a child of God, as he says. He predestined us to be adopted through Jesus Christ as his sons, according to the purpose of his will. That's uh, Ephesians 1.5. The only requirement is that we lead a sinless life while on this earth, as if to say, earth is a testing ground to determine who is worthy to inherit eternal life and live forever with God. 6. But God says, all have sinned. Romans 3.23. 7. This creates a dilemma for God. If he will only adopt sinless human beings into his family, and there are no sinless human beings, since he says all have sinned, then how is he ever to have a family? Predicament number 8. God says if we have faith in his son, Jesus Christ, which includes confessing and repenting of our sins and becoming baptized, Christ shed blood on the cross, will cleanse us from all our past sins, as if to say, we will become sinless in God's eyes and will be adopted into his family at the resurrection and live with him forever. This is the gospel. This is the good news. God warns us, however, that the doctrine of the the cross, uh, Christ's death on the cross can cleanse us from all our past sins, is foolishness or seems to be nonsense, nonsense to those who perish. But to those who are saved... Um, that is to us, it is the power of God. 1 Corinthians chapter 1.18 9. After putting our faith in Jesus as our Savior, God says we are to have a leader of the church lay his hands upon us for the purpose of receiving the gift of God, the Holy Spirit, who will come and literally live within us and aid us in recognizing, avoiding, and overcoming sin in the future. Number 10. It is important to understand that being a good person does not qualify one to become an adopted child of God. For every good person has committed at least one sin, and God says, whoever keeps the whole law but offends in one point has become guilty in all. That's James 2.10. If you don't have faith in Jesus Christ and thereby have that sin forgiven, you will die with that sin on your record and consequently will not inherit eternal life at the resurrection of the dead, who will not Uh, who will not be privileged to experience the kingdom of God. God says, Or do you not know that the unjust will not possess the kingdom of God? Do not err, neither fornicators, nor adulterers, nor idolaters, nor the effeminate, nor sodomites, nor thieves, nor the covetous, nor drunkards, nor the evil-tongued, nor the greedy, will possess the kingdom of God. And such were some of you, but you have been washed, you have been sanctified, You have been justified in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ and in the Holy Spirit of our God. That's found in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 9 through 11. So you, like every created human being, have a choice to make. Do you want to put your faith in Jesus Christ, 
quit sinning, and at the resurrection, live eternally with God in justice and peace and joy in the Holy Spirit and experience those things which God says, eye has not seen nor ear heard, nor has it entered into the heart of man. What things God has prepared for those who he lo- or who love him. That's 1 Corinthians 2, 9. Or do you want to go on sinning and incur the sentence of eternal death at the resurrection? The choice is yours. Life is In this world is short. Eternal life with God is forever. God desires that you choose eternal life with him as one of his children. And that is up to you. It takes those few simple steps and uh, searching for the truth. And then you just have to keep searching. And God's going to keep leading you. As long as you want to know, God is going to want to show you. A summary of the kingdom of God's scripture verses, and then we're going to read the verses after that. One, the kingdom and power is to be given to gods and saints. Two, seek first the kingdom of God. Three, the kingdom of heaven will be taken away from the chief priests, elders, and Pharisees who do not believe Jesus to be the Messiah. Four, Jesus said if he casts out devils by the spirit of God, then the kingdom of God has come upon them. No believers cast out devils, so the kingdom of God must have been upon them. 5. At the end of the world, Jesus will send forth his angels to gather all scandals and those who work iniquity out of his kingdom and cast them into the furnace of fire, where there will be the weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then the just will shine forth like the sun in the kingdom. When Jesus returns, he will tell those on his right hand to take possession of the kingdom prepared for them at the foundation of the world. 7. Jesus came preaching the kingdom of God and saying, The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God is at hand. 8. The kingdom of God is a mystery. 9. Some in Jesus' day were to see the kingdom of God before they died. 9. If we sin, we cannot enter the kingdom of God, but rather will be cast into unquenchable hellfire, or Guyana fire. For everyone will be salted with fire. Mark 9, uh, 46-48 and Leviticus 2.13. 11. Jesus was sent to preach and, uh, preach the kingdom of God. 12. Jesus sent 72 of his disciples to the towns he was going to visit, telling them to say to them, The kingdom of God is at hand for you. Jesus said, The kingdom comes unaware, without knowing, by surprise, for behold, it is within us. 14. One must be born again of water and the Holy Spirit before he can see or enter the kingdom of God. So that's baptism through the belief of Jesus Christ as our true Savior. 15. The disciples must endure much tribulation to enter the kingdom of God. 16. The beloved in Rome called to be saints. 17. The unjust will not possess the kingdom of God. 18. Flesh and blood can obtain no part in the kingdom of God. 19. Those who do the works of the flesh will not attain the kingdom of God. 20. No fornicator or unclean person or covetous one has any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and God. 21. Paul and the brethren, or church, at Colossae were transferred into the kingdom of Jesus Christ. That's in Colossians chapter 1. Uh, Paul and at least five others were workers in the kingdom of God. 23. Many in the dispersion were born again through the word of God, and as such could have been in the kingdom of God. 24. Being cleansed from our former sins, do good works to stay out of sin, and by uh, so doing provide an entrance into the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. 25. Jesus made us to be a kingdom. Daniel chapter seven twenty seven. And that the kingdom and power and the greatness of the kingdom under the whole heaven may be given to the people of the saints of the Most High, whose kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and all kings shall serve him and shall obey him. Matthew 6.33 But seek first the kingdom of God and his justice, and all these things shall be given you besides. Matthew 8, verses 11 and 12 And I tell you that many will come from the east and from the west, and will feast with Abraham and Isaac and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven. But the children of the kingdom will be put forth into the darkness outside. There will be the weeping and the gnashing of teeth. Matthew 21, verse 43. Therefore I say to you that the kingdom of God will be taken away from you and will be given to a people yielding its fruits. Note, you in this verse represents the physical descendants of Israel who have rejected Jesus as the Messiah. Mark 16.16 16. 
He who believes and is baptized shall be saved, but he who does not believe shall be condemned. Matthew 12, 28. But if I cast out devils by the Spirit of God, then the kingdom of God has come upon you. Also uh, found in Luke eleven twenty, but by the finger of God. Mark sixteen seventeen, And these signs shall attend those who believe. In my name they shall cast out devils. They shall speak in new tongues. Matthew chapter 13, verses 40 through 43. Therefore, just as the weeds are gathered up and burnt with fire, so will it be at the end of the world. The Son of Man will send forth his angels, and they will gather out of his kingdom all scandals and those who work iniquity, and cast them into the furnace of fire, where there will be the weeping and the gnashing of teeth. Then the just will shine forth like the sun in the kingdom of their father. He who has, it, has ears to hear, let him hear. Matthew 21, verse 23, 31, 32, and 42 through 46. And when he had come into the temple, the chief priests and elders of the people came to him as he was teaching and said, By what authority do you do these things? And who gave you this authority? Amen, amen, I say to you, the publicans and harlots are entering the kingdom of God before you. For John came to you in the way of justice, and you did not believe him. But the publicans and the harlots believed him, whereas you, seeing it, did not even repent afterwards, that you might believe him. John 1, verse 29, 34, and 41, and this is what they did not believe. The next day, John saw Jesus coming to him and said, Behold, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world. And I have seen... And have borne witness that this is the Son of God. He, or Andrew, found first his brother Simon, and said to him, We have found the Messiah, which interpreted is Christ. Jesus said to them, Did you never read in the scriptures the stone which the builders rejected has become the cornerstone? By the Lord this has been done, and it is wonderful in our eyes. Therefore I say to you that the kingdom of God will be taken away from you and will be given to a people yielding its fruits. And he who falls on this stone will be broken to pieces, but upon whomever it falls, it will grind him to powder. And when the chief priests and Pharisees had heard his parables, they knew that he was speaking about them. And though they sought to lay hands on him, they feared the people, that they regarded him as a prophet. Matthew 25, verse 31 and 34. But when the Son of Man shall come in his majesty, and all the angels with him, then he will sit on the throne of his glory. Then the king will say to those on his right hand, Come, blessed of my father, take possession of the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. And after John had, del uh, I'm sorry, this is Mark chapter 1, verses 14 and 15. And after John had been delivered up, Jesus came into Galilee, that's uh, John the Baptist, preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God, and saying, The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. Mark chapter 4, 11 and 12. And he said to them, To you it is given to know the mystery of the kingdom of God. But to those outside, all things are treated in parables, that seeing they may see, but not perceive, and hearing they may hear, but not understand, lest perhaps at any time they should be converted and their sins be forgiven them. Mark 8, verse 39. And he said to them, Amen, I say to you, there are some of those standing here who will not taste death, till they have seen the kingdom of God coming in power. Mark chapter 9, verse 46 through 48. And if your eye is an occasion of sin to you, pluck it out. It is better for you to enter the kingdom of God with one eye than having two eyes to be cast into hellfire, where their worm dies not and the fire is not quenched, for everyone shall be salted with fire and every victim shall be salted. Leviticus 2.13 Whatsoever sacrifice you offer, you shall season it with salt. Neither shall you take away the salt of the covenant of your God from your sacrifice. In all oblations, you shall offer salt. Um, so sadly and kind of scarily, this is saying that we are basically sacrificed for sin. Uh, and we will be salted. And the fire will not be quenched. Luke 4, verse 43. But he said to them, To the other towns also I must proclaim the kingdom of God, for this is why I have been sent. Luke 10, 1 and 8 through 9. Now after this the Lord appointed seventy-two others, and sent them forth two by two before him into every town and place where he himself was about to come. 
And whatsoever town you enter, and they receive you, eat what is set before you, and cure the sick who are there, and say to them, The kingdom of God is at hand for you. Luke 17, verse 20 and 21. And on being asked by the Pharisees, When is the kingdom of God coming? He answered and said to them, The kingdom of God comes unaware, or without warning, by surprise, or without knowing. Neither will they say, Behold, here it is, or behold, there it is, for behold, the kingdom of God is within you. John chapter 3, verse 3-8 through eight. Jesus answered and said to him, Amen, amen, I say to you, unless a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said to him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born again? Jesus answered, Amen, amen, I say to you, unless a man be born again of water and the Holy Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Holy Spirit is spirit. Do not wonder that I said to you, you must be born again. The wind blows where it will, and you hear its sound, but do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So is everyone who is born of the Holy Spirit. Acts chapter 14, verse 20 and 21. They, uh, speaking of Paul and Barnabas, returned to Lystra and Iconium and Antioch, reassuring the disciples and exhorting them to continue in the faith, and reminding them that through many tribulations we must enter the kingdom of God. Romans chapter 1 verse 7. To all God's beloved who are in Rome, called to be saints. 1 Corinthians chapter 6 verse 9 and 10. Or do you not know that the unjust will not possess the kingdom of God? Do not err, neither fornicators, idolaters, adulterers, effeminate, the sodomites, the thieves, nor the covetous, nor the drunkards, nor the evil-tongued, nor the greedy will possess the kingdom of God. 1 Corinthians 15.50 Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood can obtain no part in the kingdom of God, neither shall corruption have any part in incorruption. So that means we will not have a physical body. Spiritual only. Uh, Galatians chapter 5, verse 19 and 21. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are, and concerning these I warn you, and I have warned you, and they who uh, do such things will not attain the kingdom of God. Ephesians 5, 5. For know this, and understand, that no fornicator or unclean person or covetous one has any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and God. Colossians chapter 1, verse 2, 4, 9, 10, and 12 through 12, um, 14. To the brethren in Colossae, holy and faithful is Christ Jesus, for we have heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and of the love that you bear towards all the saints. This is why we too have been praying for your unceasingly since the day we heard this, and asking that you may be filled with knowledge of his will, and all spiritual wisdom and understanding. May you walk worthily of God and please him in all things, growing in the knowledge of God, rendering thanks to the Father, who has made us worthy to share the lot of the saints in light. He has rescued us from the power of darkness and transferred us into the kingdom of his beloved Son, in whom we have our redemption, the remission, which is forgiveness or pardon, of our sins. Colossians chapter 4, verse 7 and 9 through 12. Tychius, Onesimus, who is one of you, Aristarchus, my fellow prisoner, Mark, Barnabas' cousin, and Jesus, who is called Justice, of men circumcised, these only are my fellow workers in the kingdom of God. They have been a comfort to me. Ephaphras, who is one of you, sends you greetings, a servant of Christ Jesus, who is ever solicitous for you in prayers, that you may remain perfect and completely in accord with all the will of God. 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 1, 3, and 23. Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ, to the sojourners of the dispersion in Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, Minor, and Bithynia, chosen, blessed be the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to his great mercy has begotten us again, through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, unto a living hope, for you have been reborn, not from corruptible seed, but from incorruptible, through the word of God who lives and abides forever. 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 9-11 through 11. For he who lacks them is blind, 
groping his way, and has forgotten that he was cleansed from his former sins. Therefore, brethren, strive even more by good works to make your calling and election sure. For if you do this, you will not fall into sin at any time. Indeed, in this way will be amplified, provided for you, the entrance into the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Uh, this is a great research paper on the kingdom of God. And if you are wondering, what is the kingdom of God? Where is the kingdom of God? What is God referring to or Jesus referring to when he's talking about this? Um, and it's very clear by the scripture um, laid out in the Bible that the kingdom of God is within us. And we are able to have that or see what that kingdom of God is. I'm working if we are baptized and if we are trusting that Jesus is the true Savior of God and we are repenting for our sins. Um, that was the kingdom of God that Jesus was referring to uh, to seeing and being on that earth already. Um, this is something that we have to remember. We are the temple of God and that's what that comes back to as well. Um, we have to search out the truth. We have to um, realize that Jesus is the Savior of our God and that through him we were given the Holy Spirit and the kingdom of God is here. It's just not very apparent. Um, we have to rebaptize. We have to repent. We have to search the Bible, the word of God, the, the true word of God, scriptural, biblical word, um, and try to do what he has planned from the beginning for us through his law, um, which some of it, of course, was undone by Christ being that Holocaust, um, but most of it is still relevant and still things that God expects us to do, um, especially things like the Sabbath and his feast days. So um, I ask you all to pray on this and uh, have a wonderful, blessed day.